looks like Senator Rand Paul is the only senator standing against a $40 billion aid package for Ukraine, supporting Ukrainian independence. Yes, we all support Ukrainian independence. The question is at what cost? Since we now understand that Ukrainian independence is a function of what the United States is providing Ukrainians, the question is how much will Americans be expected to pay for how long and how finally will this help Americans, especially at a time of financial distress here in the United States? Let's dig into some details. I'm Brendan Fallon. And I'm Lee Smith. And, and we're, we're Over, over the, the target. target. Let's kick off with this fairly controversial quote from Mitch McConnell uh, laying out just how much of a priority he thinks the war in Ukraine is. I think we all agree the most important thing going on in the world right now is the war in Ukraine. Yes, we all agree. He's, spe he's speaking, it, ap it appears, about... Um, 99 senators, not including Rand Paul. He's uh, speaking about uh, the vast majority of the House of Representatives, presumably speaking about a lot of Washington as well, from policy analysts to lobbyists to defense contractors. However, once you get outside the beltway in the vast heartland of the United States, you see there are a number of other priorities that people have, whether you're the, uh, the parent of an infant or a toddler. And there's a baby formula crisis. Maybe you're a commuter and you have to go to work and you've noticed that gas prices are soaring. Or maybe you're a homemaker and you're shopping for food to feed your family. And you've noticed that food prices are also soaring. So the idea that Mitch McConnell, while speaking for establishment Washington, is saying we all agree that the war in Ukraine is the most important thing right now. It's not only tin-eared, it's preposterous, but it gives us an important picture onto how uh, our policymakers, even our senior most policymakers, understand their business oftentimes is in opposition to how the rest of Americans live their lives. The idea that America would put a lot of money into this war effort, this isn't an isolated circumstance. You were saying before, Lee, yeah. this isn't the first time in, in recent years, in America's recent history, that America has poured a lot of money into a of a war effort on foreign soil. Well, absolutely. I mean, if we look at what happened in Afghanistan, we look at, you know, people remember now Joe Biden's disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. Biden had one thing right, however, and the thing he had right was to get out of Afghanistan. Donald Trump wanted to get out of Afghanistan as well. Perhaps he should have fought harder against the senior military officials who wanted to stay in there. But remember what happened in Afghanistan and is still, to a lesser extent, happening in Iraq. The amount of money that's being spent, the amount of lives that are being lost, the amount of young Americans who are coming back wounded and disabled. And for what strategic and for what purpose? How in the end was fighting for Afghanistani democracy or to establish a national police force? How did this assist the American interest, right? This is like, well, they, the, the Taliban might come to the United States and um, decide to wage terror operations against Americans. How about this? You can check their visas, right? The Taliban is not entitled to an American visa. You can actually stop them at the border and say, guess what? You're not getting in, right? And this was, of course, part of Donald Trump's plans with the travel ban, keeping people from dangerous countries uh, and whose security services we have no relationship with, so we can't check them, right? But the point is the argument that our senior most officials made about why we need to stay in Afghanistan, why we need to stay in Iraq, and why Ukraine is so important now. Again, it is totally unmoored from the reality of most Americans, of virtually all Americans outside of Washington, D.C. I see a, a glaring inconsistency here. You, you mentioned Afghanistan. This is one of the freshest examples of America mm -hmm. pouring a lot of money into a, a war effort. But if humanitarian concerns is such a priority. Uh, the Taliban uh, have free reign over Afghanistan now. They're continuing their previous yeah. practices of, of severely oppressing women. So why ignore that? Why, why make Ukraine such a huge priority? This is a great question. Why is Ukraine a priority? And you know, you and I, I think the important thing here is to ask questions to clarify issues. I think that's precisely what we want to know. Why to Mitch McConnell, why to the Senate, Aside from Rand Paul, I'm sure there are other senators and there are other House members who have questions about this and want to know what's going on. Unfortunately, they're going along to get along. But why 
Is this a vital interest? Why do we need to keep spending money there? And one of the important issues is how much money are we going to spend there? Because we saw with Afghanistan and Iraq that once this, um, once this train is in motion, it's very, very hard to stop it because these conflicts create their own constituencies. They create their own lobbies, right? Not just Washington lobbies, they create international lobbies so that you have NATO members, you have other European powers, you will have Asian powers, you will have all sorts of powers who will be lobbying for different things uh, in Washington that will be attached to the conflict right now in Eastern Europe, right? So this is the danger. Once that money train starts rolling, it's very, very, very difficult to stop it. So if I understand what you're saying, Lee, is that this will be used, this money that's been apportioned to go to Ukraine, other lobbyists will jump onto this and use it to get money for their own agendas. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not just an arms package and to supply a lethal weapons. One of the things that always goes into these packages, and I think it's very important for people to understand what goes on here, because people think of war as it just helps the right, right? Right-wing warmongers or neocons or whatever you want to, however people are describing them, right? The, the, the arms industry, Raytheon, uh, you know, McDonald, McDonald Douglas, things like that. No, it's not. It's not just defense contractors. It's also NGOs. It's USAID, right? So it's the left as well. When you're looking at Washington, D.C., when you're looking at the Beltway, there's a bipartisan consensus over conflict because what conflict does is it, 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 it brings in a whole bunch of money, but not just for defense contractors because the State Department is always going to go in there right, and, and seek aid from USAID. If you want to know, if you want to look at Washington, D.C., which is always voting Democratic, uh, this is an enormous constituency for all of that money that is flowing through the system, right? These are aid workers. These are people who are going to help build um, stronger, more efficient parliaments, or they're going to work on women's studies programs or gender studies programs or, you know, whatever you want to call it. But that's how the operation works. It's right and left that are going to be gaining from this conflict, right and left in Washington, that is. One term that I've heard coming through in the, the discussion around this is stalemate. It, this mm -hmm. is being used to describe the, the current status of the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And I, I think it, it also reminds me of the status that was often used to describe the situation in Afghanistan. Yeah. I think we could just listen to this quote from the director of the Defense Intelligence Agency here. Are we reading it now? They have the ability to win if we continue to support without us being pulled into a land war with them on their own. Can they win? I, th I think that is a, uh, that is a difficult uh, prediction to make. Uh, right now, I think where, where the agency is at is a, is a, is a prolonged stalemate should, should no factor change uh, on either side. In other words, the Russians continue to do what they're doing, and we, we continue to do what we're doing for the Ukrainians. I, I see that as a stalemate, not, not necessarily. Hands, There's something about the way that he says this, and it, it could just be my imagination, but it's, it's almost as if it's a, it's a desirable outcome. It's, it's almost like he, he talks about this is what the Russians are doing, this is what the U.S. is doing, uh, to achieve, basically yeah. achieve a stalemate. Is a stalemate a, a desirable outcome? Well, I mean, there are certainly times when a stalemate is a desirable outcome, except there are a couple of different factors here. The first factor is, does the United States want to be playing for a stalemate on Russia's borders? Remember, geopolitics um, is a combination of two different words, right? Geography and politics. If we look at the map, we see that Ukraine is on Russia's border. This is very different from funding a, a proxy war, as, as often happened during the, uh, during the Cold War, funding a proxy war in Africa, right? <laughs> funding a proxy war on Russia's borders is a very, very different issue. So is that really what we want? We want to be paying for a stalemate on Russia's borders because it's not clear that Russia can afford a stalemate on its borders. At what point does Russia tip over the table and say, OK, enough of the stalemate. We have to go to the wall here and we have to make sure there's not a stalemate because it's our border. Our people live here. We're not content with a stalemate. We're not going to live um, hemmed in by proxies funded by the United States. So that's one issue.
If you want to see the full 20 minute version of this over the target episode, you can find Lee and I on Epoch TV, where we don't run the risk of being censored or canceled. Join us at Epic TV, where you'll find Over the Target and all of your other favorite Epoch TV shows.